come back to writing speeches, where, you know, talk about political communication. What was the toughest crisis for you to manage as a, a media advisor to Prime Minister Singh? Well, I mean, his inability to speak like a politician. Yeah. Right? He was very professorial. <laughs> always. Yes. yes. Right? And he was very earnest. Mm -hmm. So every speech you would read earnestly, like a good student, you know, who's got a text to read. Yeah. Uh, 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 in, in, in a, you know, we used to have this uh, elocution competition when we were in school, right? As opposed to debating. Yeah. You're supposed to have yeah. ability to speak. Yeah. And you was always practicing. But politicians have to be different, you know. I mean, that is where Narendra Modi scores, though he's become jaded in, in the way he speaks now. I think he's, he's, he, he's become repetitive in many ways. Um, but the most popular uh, prime ministers, I mean, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, what a brilliant speaker he was. You, you're mesmerized listening to him, even if you did not agree with everything. Yeah. Yeah. He's just simply mesmerized. No, I have a story on this. When I was in Times of India, uh, I was editorial page editor and I used to do the edits. So in 95, 96, when Simarao got elected out and Vajpayee was a 13-day government, we were generally critical of this 13-day government, editorially, uh, saying it was not a legitimate government. So Ashok Jain, who was the chairman of the Bennett Coleman, he called me and said, why are you Vajpayee ke khilaf likh rahe? So I said, look, my Vajpayee ji ke khilaf nahi likh raho. Mai keh raho ki ye government doesn't have majority. You know, the president should have found out before swearing him. They will be voted out. And they were voted out, right? After 13 yeah. days, they were voted out. Um, so he said, theek hai. And these were the good old days when publishers did not, you know, force you to yeah, say what. Yeah. He just wanted to Make indicate to me. Yeah, you know, tone it down. Yeah. Tone, dial it down a bit, yeah. Then came the day when there was the vote of confidence speech. This is the one vote. One vote he lost. And you remember that speech. It's still there on YouTube. And I have watched it again and again. One of the most outstanding speeches of Atal Bihari Vajpayee. So, a few minutes before it, I get a call from the chairman's office saying, Chairman is calling you. So, I went up. He said, wait here. Atal ji bolne wale hai. Hum bil ke sunenge. So, we had television on Lok Sabha channel. And he and I heard the Prime Minister defending his government. At the end of the speech, uh, Ashok Jain turns to me and says, so what is your view? I said, sir, a brilliant speech. I mean, you, he could not have spoken better. What a fantastic. So he says, bas itna ja ke likhye na. <laughs> Ab itna ja ke likhye na. <laughs> I mean, when I now see the relationship between journalists and owners, yes. <laughs> the kind of... Yes, you know, unimaginable. Uh, unimaginable. But it's... talk about today's media and also the very um, seemingly paradoxical relationship between Modi and the media. I say seemingly paradoxical because I think Prime Minister Modi at the, at, at the core of it, because of 2002, because of his belief that the media, the liberal media was unfair to him. Obviously, the starting point is that doesn't like the media, would like a situation where he bypasses the media and often in his politics he has. He, he used social media to communicate directly with the voter. When you look at the media landscape today, what do you see? Well, I've written on this. Um, I think the bigger challenge in my view is self-censorship. Yes. Uh, compared to any form of government censorship. I agree. I think journalists are... Uh, what, what is that phrase, uh, are kneeling when asked to bend, mm. right? Um, I don't, I mean, I have written freely, right? I've been censored. I, I've been censored by The Week magazine. I can say it on record, uh, which did not like something which I wrote and I've stopped writing for them. I've been advised by other newspapers, you know, why don't you delete this sentence? Why don't you delete that sentence? And on occasion, I've even done that in order to make the larger point which I was making. I said, okay, the one And that's happened in every newsroom. Yeah, group. exactly. Uh, and so, under different prime ministers as well. And under different editors, right? I mean, no, different, so, different governments. Uh, under different governments. So therefore, I said, all right. you know. But I think I have written a lot of columns critical of the government. Right? Uh, nobody, till now, <laughs> I have not been punished. Right? 
maybe i will at some point but i don't know but i think the fact is that if you exercise your freedom there is space available right uh, and there are several websites there are several uh, people like you etc in the media still exercising that space that freedom and and, and not yet be, being you know uh, raided on or whatever uh but i think the fear of media the self censorship which i see and i'm sorry to use this word but i often see a lot of idiocy in media i mean appalling idiocy you know when you see something so visible and you're not willing to tell your viewer that what you're showing is this uh, 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 how can you be so assume that your viewer is stupid i mean i'm seeing a visual and the anchor is not willing to tell me what that visual implies we are almost hoping okay let this visual go let's come to the next that is idiocy uh, uh, whether it is out of fear or simple uh, incompetence i don't know but i think there's a lot of that in the media do you think it links to because i kind of agree with you that i don't actually think i don't know that it's people in government calling up people and saying do this story this way there may be occasions that by, by the way those phone calls have come also again from all governments at all you know that i can remember being in the media and it's how you handle that phone call like you said it's how you handle that phone call that phone call will come it's somebody's job to make that phone call that give a better spin on the exactly. story Do you think that what's happening today in the media links to broken revenue models links to the fact that you today have big businesses owning most of media and those big businesses need other things from government not just the modi government they'll need it from tomorrow if there's a congress government they'll need it from them also what is the reason that we're seeing media like this today in your opinion well i think several things are happening i mean there is change of uh, habit of uh, consumers of news uh, the younger generation no longer reads newspapers it's all on the mobile phone yeah. uh the kind of news that they are looking for is changing so technology is changing markets are changing uh professionalism is uh changing the kind of uh, reporting that happens is changing so there's a complex set of factors but i want to say something on what you said earlier about every government Does something. I'm just saying that for every government that I have you're remembered, right. you have got a phone call. I have got a phone call from somebody Correct. saying, "Are you very unfair?" No, in fact, I, I want to give you a specific example. First of all, the constitution allows a government to do that, right? Under Article 19.1, there are several uh, factors under which a, a government can legitimately intervene and ask the media not to report something. so national security yeah, communal national security, rights uh, uh, and so on now i'll give you a specific example where i in fact uh, as media advisor to the prime minister called up the media including i would have imagine you when the head of dera satcha sauda was being arrested um the home secretary then came to me and said that look we are going to arrest this chap uh, and there's going to be violence because his supporters are going to go out onto the streets we expect a lot of violence it would help us if none of this appeared on television to control the violence so i made phone calls to all the tv channels and nobody showed those visuals as a result of which they were able to arrest him without any violence of course subsequently he was released and then subsequently he was rearrested i mean you know the whole story but i did give that as an example where i regarded making those phone calls asking for some event not to be shown because of the uh, law and order kind of implications and i think any government would do that as you said 